Throughout much of the 1980s, actress Molly Ringwald was the definition of your beloved child star and dominated the movie screens. She was well known as a teen icon as well, mainly for appearing in successful John Hughes classic films like Sixteen Candles, The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. These days, you may have noticed Molly in the hit Netflix series Dahmer Monster The Jeffrey Dahmer Story, based on the real-life serial killer where she portrays Dahmer's stepmother Sherry, and reportedly the actress will be working with the show's creator Ryan Murphy in some other upcoming projects too. From the outside looking in, Molly Ringwald's journey to fame was smooth and flourishing, but she's revealed in more recent years that this certainly wasn't always the case, and she had to navigate an often brutal industry as a young star. So stay tuned because we'll get into all of that, including Molly's early years and much more, here for you on Famous Life. Molly Kathleen Ringwald was born on February 18, 1968 in Roseville, California to mother Adele Edith, who was a chef, and father Robert Scott Bob Ringwald, a blind jazz pianist from German descent. Molly has two siblings, Beth and Kelly, as well as an older brother, but he had passed away before Molly was born. Molly started her career at the young age of five, so there was barely a time in her life when she wasn't performing. When she was five, she appeared in an onstage production of Alice in Wonderland as the Dormouse, and the following year, Molly recorded a music album with her father and his group, the Fulton Street Jazz Band, titled I Want to Be Loved by You. In terms of school, when growing up, Molly attended and graduated from Lycée Français de Los Angeles, which is a private bilingual school. Despite her quick start in showbiz, Molly didn't particularly come from a famous family, despite her father's music career. However, she was thrust into the glamour of Hollywood almost instantly and started seeing regular film and TV work before she was even a teenager. When she was 10 years old, Molly was chosen to play Kate in the Los Angeles production of Annie. Then a year later, she appeared on the TV show Different Strokes and was further selected to be part of the large cast of the series spin-off The Facts of Life, where she played Molly Parker, a perky and feminist student at Eastland Girls School. Soon would come bigger movie roles and many of coming-of-age stories for which Molly became well-known, and in reality, the actress could relate to many of these situations. She talked about growing up in the industry and the hurdles she sometimes faced, saying, You know, my parents, even though my father was a jazz musician, he really didn't have any experience with Hollywood. They were total novices. They really didn't know anything about what business was like and how truly dangerous the business was and how truly dangerous it can be for children and for their development. You know, my mom often said, if I knew then what I know now, I would have never let you be a child actor. And I'm kind of one of the success stories, you know? I'm still here. According to Molly's recollections, some things that make the industry so dangerous at times to child actors is the vulnerability. For instance, facing some brutal situations like harsh rejection when you are so young. Molly continued, These things happen and you know they affect you and I feel like you have to be incredibly strong to do this as a career, you know, emotionally. She also explained how it forces children to learn a difficult balancing act early on. Either way, it seemed Molly navigated things pretty well to say the least, and next up would be her success as a teen icon in the 1980s. In 1980, Ringwald first performed as a lead vocalist on two Disney albums, a patriotic one as well as a Christmas album. Then she turned towards working in film, landing a key supporting role in the movie Tempest in 1982. For this role, Molly was nominated for a Golden Globe Award. It was 1984's Sixteen Candles that skyrocketed Molly to fame, and for this movie, she was cast as Samantha Baker, a girl whose family forgets about her 16th birthday. The man behind this film was John Hughes, and Molly would star in a handful of his popular movies. The actress revealed how she first was connected to Hughes, saying, He, John, told me later that over a July 4th weekend, while looking at headshots of actors to consider for the movie, he found mine and decided to write another movie around the character he imagined that girl to be. That script became 16 Candles. A meeting was arranged for Ringwald and Hughes and they hit it off right away. Molly filmed 16 Candles the summer after she finished 9th grade and it was only the beginning for this teen icon. Her performance in this movie was well received and many said her acting was especially engaging. After that, Hughes cast Molly in another one of his films, The Breakfast Club, classic from 1985. In this movie, which was a success on all fronts, Molly played Claire, a spoiled and rich beauty queen, who lands a spot in detention for skipping class to go to the mall. Again, she received well reviews for her performance. Molly revealed that before they even started to film The Breakfast Club, Hughes wrote another film specifically for her, titled Pretty in Pink. Molly would star in this while she was still in high school and it came out in 1986. In this film,
film, she played Andy Walsh, but when she was first asked about it, she was reluctant to star in it. Once Molly noticed producers would have trouble replacing her though, she decided to take the role. The movie was about a working class girl going through the social prejudices of her posh high school. When talking about her relationship with Hughes and the time spent working together, Ringwald later revealed, I had what would be called a symbiotic relationship with John during the first of those two films. I've been called his muse, which I believe I was for a little while, but more than that, I felt he listened to me though. Certainly not all the time. All three of these films launched Molly into mega stardom, yet it would appear she stayed humble and explained in an interview that despite her fame, she still wanted to be liked by her high school classmates. In 1987, Molly was offered a role in Some Kind of Wonderful, another John Hughes film, but she turned it down as she thought it was too much like the other movie she starred in. After Pretty in Pink, Ringwald was determined to act in more mature roles. However, she was set to star in another Hughes movie, Oil and Vinegar, but it got scrapped when he refused to rewrite the script. Also in 1987, Molly was cast as Randy in the movie The Pickup Artist alongside Robert Downey Jr. in one of his first lead roles, but it was met with mixed reviews and the next year she starred in For Keeps, what would be considered Molly's final teen movie. Around the same time, she was working continuously on both big and small screen projects, including the 1990 film Betsy's Wedding. After filming the movie Fresh Horses, which wasn't a success in the early 1990s, Ringwald reportedly turned down female lead roles in the films Pretty Woman and Go. Then, in the early 1990s, Molly, who went to a French school as we mentioned and is fluent in the language, decided to move to Paris where she starred in a handful of French movies. This move was puzzling to some, but according to her website, Molly considers herself a lifelong Francophile and she was reportedly also longing for a normal life away from the public eye, which she told the Los Angeles Times in 1994. For two years, Ringwald stuck to very non-commercial projects, including a couple of French films that don't even appear on her IMDb profile. However, by the early 90s, she was returning to the US here and there to work on American movies and TV projects, such as a lead role in Stephen King's The Stand, the film Malicious in 1995, and the movie Strike It Rich. In the late 90s, Molly was in the US full-time, and some roles that came for her next included the sitcom Townies, and appeared on other TV shows such as The Outer Limits in 2000. Ringwald also got involved in Broadway around this time, such as when she played Sally Bowles in the 2002 revival production of The Cabaret, and before that in the off-Broadway musical Tick Tick Boom. In 2003, she appeared on Enchanted on Broadway, but left after a few months due to being pregnant with her daughter. In late 2004, she was in the Broadway play Modern Orthodox, and two years later, she starred as Charity Hope Valentine in the national tour of the Broadway revival of the musical Sweet Charity. However, it would be back to Hollywood for Molly after messing up her feet in the Sweet Charity Tour, and by 2008, her roles had come full circle, as she played the mother to the title teen character in the ABC series The Secret Life of an American Teenager, which ran for five seasons. Later on, she started playing a mom again on CW's Riverdale, and the recurring role as main character Archie Andrews' mother Mary. The show is still currently running, and while Molly first only appeared as a guest, these days she has taken a more prominent role following the death of actor Luke Perry, who played Archie's father. Over the last few years, Molly has appeared in other movies as well as going back to her love of singing and jazz music, but most recently, aside from Riverdale, we've seen her in a starring role in the hit Netflix series Dahmer, Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. For this role, Molly dyed her signature red hair a shade of brown and donned large glasses which are fitting for the time period the murders took place. It's interesting that this time period the show takes place in is very close to when Ringwald starred in many of her biggest hit movies as a teen. For the intense show, Molly portrays Sherry Dahmer Jeffrey Dahmer's stepmother who wed Dahmer's father Lionel in 1978. In reality, the real Sherry stayed out of the public eye for the most part, however both she and Lionel kept their last names even after the full exposure of Jeffrey's heinous crimes came to light. Ringwald portrays Sherry as a strong, level-headed, and generally kind woman from the Midwest, which is fairly accurate according to what's known about her. Lionel and Sherry once gave an interview on Larry King, and the best way to describe Sherry during this interview is respectful but firm. For example, while she revealed that her other stepson David had a second child on the way, she refused to provide his changed last name, say where he was living, or give any identifiable details. Though her role isn't the most prominent of the cast, Ringwald seems to do the real Sherry justice. Furthermore, Dahmer seems to be only the beginning of Molly's collaborations with the series creator Ryan Murphy. The actress is set to star in the second season of his show Feud. On this anthology miniseries, the second season titled Capote's Women will be set in the 1970s and follow the author Truman Capote. More specifically, it will show how Capote 
Capote stabbed several of his female socialite friends in the back with the publication of a short story for Esquire. For this show, Molly will be playing the part of Joanne Carson, Johnny Carson's second wife, who remained close friends with Capote till his death. It seems that while Molly Ringwald survived the industry as a child star and came out more normal than you'd expect, she isn't done building her steady acting career quite yet, and she's diversifying into some more serious roles as the years go on. Either way, we can't wait to see what she's up to next. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Famous Life and leave a comment for who you'd like us to feature next.